change your heart, change your life, change the planet. I've got lots of leftover bananas and oranges from the race yesterday, so it looks like I'm going to be having me some banana orange smoothies. Mm -hmm. So here's what I just concocted. Bunch of bananas, bunch of oranges, like a quarter teaspoon of vanilla powder that a friend gave me, and probably a tablespoon of chia seeds. And then I'll put some well water in there and rock that baby out. So I got my banana orange, vanilla, and chia smoothie. Mmm. Mmm. Which is really good. Tastes a little bit like an orange Julius. Yeah. And I want to talk about some research I was doing this morning. I've been looking into the effect of anxiety on the body and how to alleviate that because it's something that I deal with on a regular basis. And in the past, I would always use running to help me through that. But with my injury, it's been really difficult. I do go on walks, uh, trudging through the snow and whatnot and hanging out up on the mountain, exploring and cutting trails. But it's not quite as effective as running and feeling fast and feeling fit. So of late, I've been trying to find ways to think my way through the anxiety, uh, creating tools and techniques and studying what's out there, the current tools in psychology uh, to help people as well as certain mindfulness practices. But what I just came across today uh, while I was doing the research, there's some studies that show that when you feel physically powerful in your body, you can actually turn off that traumatic, anxious response. What they're coming to discover is that anxiety and the effects of a traumatic experience don't just exist in the brain as neural networks, they actually inhabit the body as well. And there are plenty of teachings out there that have talked about this for quite a time now, but uh, modern science is catching up to that and finding out that there is a physical connection in the body to anxiety and continued traumatic experience long after uh, the traumatic event has ended. So one of the things that they looked at was the effect of running and other types of activity on transforming the body's experience. And from personal experience, what I've discovered is that running can get me through just about any state that I'm in, uh, regardless of how badly it has me gripped. If I can take my little steps and get out the door, I will get through it. Um, but what they also found is that it's a personal experience Running doesn't work for everybody. It works very powerfully for me and many other people, but if you don't feel powerful while doing that activity, it's not going to work for you. Uh, so, for instance, you might be a swimmer, you might be a gymnast, you might be a boxer, you might be a skateboarder, whatever it might be, but doing something well that you feel confident and competent in actually helps your body to turn off its response, its alarm bells. Because your body wants to feel safe. Your body is what's protecting your brain. Without the body, the brain just dies. It's a puddle of goo on the ground. So the body's job is to protect it, keep it going, keep it happy, keep it safe. So if the body perceives that it's strong and competent and moving through the world swiftly, doing an activity with grace and power, then it turns off the alarm bells. It's like, okay, everything's good. I got this. I can handle this. I'm feeling good. And that's why it's really important you pick an activity that makes you feel good, that resonates with you. And not just listen to me and say that running cures all ills, because it doesn't. It cures most of mine, but it may not cure yours. Or mitigate them. Let's take that word cure out of the conversation. Mitigate. Alleviate. So, if you're feeling anxiety, you need to move your body, and you need to move your body powerfully, and you need to move your body in a way that you're familiar with, that you're comfortable with. And if you don't have that yet, learn something, practice something, immerse yourself in something. We all have something that makes our body feel good. It might be dancing. Dancing would be a great one as well, if you love to dance. When we were kids, we moved our bodies, but as we age, we forget to do that. We don't see it as a priority. We might see it as play, not important. I don't have time. But it is important, especially if you're dealing with anxiety or recovering from a traumatic experience. And as I've also come to learn, all the smoothie in the world isn't going to fix that or make it go away. 
You got to get into your body. You got to feel powerful. You got to move it. Tell it that it's okay. Show it that it's okay. That it can turn off that alarm bell now. Right? Hope that's abuse. See ya. <laughs>